and Coach Shem Beckler of Michigan, who defeated Purdue on Saturday 31-7, has tied the great Fielding H. Jost as Michigan's all-time winningest coach. Now, congratulations. No, it's nice, Jim, but that wasn't the important thing. The, <laughs> the important thing was to win this game so we could stay alive in this race. Well, you won it, and you won it impressively. Um, what did you feel about the game? You weren't happy leaving the field, and we wonder why. Well, it's always one of those games. The last three games, Jim, of course, we led Indiana 35 to nothing at halftime. We were uh, won a big game against Illinois by scoring 69 points. We're ahead by 24 at halftime here. In the second half of those games, we usually don't play as well as we do in the first half. And you worry about whether you're really getting a ball club ready for a knockdown, drag out game. Well, your first drive against Purdue was a good one, and then it ended poorly. And I think that that maybe got a lot of people wondering whether this might be a spoiler maker type team. Well, I don't know about that. I, I was uh, impressed that we moved the ball. This was the first play of the game. Uh, we hit Jeff Brown over the middle for a first down. and. Uh, we moved pretty well, and when you move early in the game, you always feel you're going to be all right. Uh, this was a pass from um, Harbaugh to McMurtry that got the ball to 20, but we stalled here. Uh, we, uh, the snap was a little bit high, and we probably a little late kicking it, but this Woodson is the fastest guy you ever saw. He came off the corner and blocked it. Now, that's embarrassing, Jim, when they come off of there and block a field goal. But the defense holds, you get the ball back, and then you go to work again. We come right back again as soon as we get the ball, and Jim hits McMurtry over the middle again for a good gain in the first down. McMurtry and looked uh, filled in well for John Colasso. Right. Third and one here, he pitches to Gerald White for a first down. Uh, that's a key play. Um, you know, we've been banging inside for the first downs, and this time we faked in there and went outside. Big third and nine play. Jim goes back to pass. Hits uh, Jokic over the middle for a first down. And that pass was thrown in traffic. A lot of people covering deep. Well, he, he zeroed it in there. You know, he had enough of it to get it in. Here he, on a give to Bob Perriman, we go in standing up from about the five-yard line. That's our first touchdown, and we take the lead seven to nothing. And this became a very big play. Big wind down in uh, Lafayette. This ball was kicked up into the wind. It was held in the wind. Fell just uh, beyond the 20-yard line. Thomas Wilshire went down and recovered it for us. It's exactly the way it was in that Notre Dame game, if you remember, Jim. Uh, so we come back here now. Jim scrambles um, uh, for a big gain, and we're down inside the 10-yard line. You'd like to see Jim to scramble it. like that a little more, too. I don't mind that. I like to see him step up into the pocket if nothing's there and then take off running. Here he comes back over the middle to Jokic again for a touchdown. And then early in the second period, we go up 14 to nothing. And they were playing defensively pretty tough against you. Pretty tough against the run uh, at that time. Uh, here our defense uh, did a good job of containing him. As a matter of fact, Jim contained them almost completely the first half. Um, it wasn't until our um, second unit went in there that they started to move. Uh, with any degree of uh, efficiency at all. Jim Harbaugh's getting an opportunity to run a little bit on the wishbone, too. Teams trying to take away the tailback? Well, we want to make sure that he, you know, that they know he's a threat in there, that we'll, you know, we'll run the wishbone. Here he hits uh, Kenny Higgins over the middle. Um, we, we, we want to keep that wishbone going. We we'll keep working at it and doing a good job. Here Gerald White comes out of the backfield, catches the ball on a crossing pattern so that we're down in there close again. This time, Perriman uh, bucks in there again. Slow call by the officials. I suppose they wanted to wait whether the entire <laughs> body was over the goal line or not. <laughs> but anyway, it was a legitimate touchdown. We go up 21 to nothing. And right before half, it, it appeared as though Purdue got offensively going. Was that a, a change defensively? or? Well, they, they broke two plays, Jim. That one uh, there and, uh, um, and uh, moved down to about midfield um, before the drive finally stalled and then we got the ball back as a matter of fact and uh, moved down in there quickly um, Jim hit a big pass here to Higgins great catch by Kenny Higgins uh, yeah that was he was pretty well covered he had to go up and take the ball away from him finally uh, just before the half 11 seconds left and uh, Mike Gillette kicks the field goal so we go in at halftime 24 to nothing ahead you got to feel pretty good at that point going in at 24 nothing after having botched up that first drive, getting nothing out of it, and getting the one turnover go up 14. Did you feel secure? Did you feel because yes. you were moving the football and the defense well, as long shut as we them? moved the football, you know, and um, our defense was playing well. 
As long as you keep your uh, regular defense in there, you're going to be all right. I didn't think Purdue would move on us very much if we did that. I heard they surprised you a little bit with some of the things they did defensively to stop the run. They, they played a lot of flex defense. A flex defense, Jim, means that they take a defensive lineman, play him back off the ball, and let the guy flow from back off the ball, pinch a couple of guys in here, let this guy roam free, free in there. We had to make some adjustments there to get those people blocked. And, uh, and we did, and in the long run, in the second half, we did move the ball pretty well on the ground. Well, stay with us because second half highlights in Michigan's record-setting win over Purdue are coming up when Michigan Replay continues. Michigan leading Purdue 24 to nothing at halftime, and at halftime you obviously had to be happy with both offense and defense. Did you say anything in the locker room to get them going for the second half? Well, we, um, you know, we made the usual adjustments and uh, and uh, said we did a good job the first half. Let's go out, get it done the second half. Let's go right back like the score is nothing to nothing, Jim. That's the way we want to go out the second half. Well, it appeared as though in the first time you had possession, you were hitting on all eight, and the message was gotten across. Well, we started 20. They kicked the ball off out, and we gave the ball to Morris. He made an excellent run here for about 20 yards. Jimmy appears to be running a little harder in this game. But uh, I thought in the second half he did. The first half he was a little bit tentative, but the second half I thought he ran uh, pretty well. Third and sixth situation, Jim goes back and hits Higgins for a first down at the 40-yard line. And uh, this is a good drive and uh, several third down situations. This is third and nine and uh, went to a trap play, really. Uh, it's not really a draw, a little trap play. And uh, Jamie ran out of there for first down. On third down and one, um, they have all nine people up on the line, Jim. And uh, we faked into the line to the fullback and pitched it out to Jamie for the touchdown. Getting a lot of production out of that wishbone everywhere in the field. Right. We, we like to use it everywhere. We want to make sure that people have to defend it everywhere. So that was an 80-yard drive and, and uh, made it 31 to nothing. Defense is playing well here and uh, shutting them down. Uh, so at this particular stage in the game, pretty well in hand. But... Um, um, we didn't get real good blocking at the point of attack here, so Jamie had his own ideas. <laughs> Figured things looked a little cleaner out to the other side and went around the other way. And you don't mind that. Now, we, do, we work on that play, but it's hard to, hard <laughs> to develop that one. Uh, this is an option play here, and big fullback breaks through, and Jim gives him the ball for a good play. He's been running very well, Bob Perriman. He's gotten a lot of yardage in the last three or four games, and that's important. Jim goes back to pass, and... This is one of those things, there's a badly executed uh, pass play. The routes were run poorly, the pass was thrown poorly, and we made uh, Woodson look like the All-American that he is when he intercepted that <laughs> no ball. No question, he's a good player. He is that, he's an excellent player. Um, Purdue comes back and uh, picks up a first down. And they were ineffective throwing, which I think was surprised a lot of people. Well, you know, they, they throw pretty well, and. This drive, uh, we put our second defensive unit in there, and uh, they went 90-some yards, Jim, to score, and uh, that was upsetting. This is the touchdown play. He went in to score. Uh, I hate to see that. Uh, that second defense has given up five touchdowns this year, Jim. That's why I was upset. Now it's time for the Budweiser play of the game. We're leading 7 to nothing, Jim, and we're going to kick off in this crazy wind in Lafayette. The ball's held up in the air. Thomas Wilshire comes down and uh, grabs the football uh, inside the 25-yard line, and that it, uh, led to our second touchdown. And I think that might have demoralized them when we went in and went ahead 14 to nothing. For the average fan, uh, it's a little tough for them to understand. After the game, when you are interviewed in the locker room and you say they're ahead 24 to nothing, and you say, I don't like these kind of games. And for the average, that's a little tough. To, that's well, a little tough for him to understand uh, why you're, a coach you're, you're would take that. that statement out of context. Okay, give me the context. Well, the context is that it's difficult to coach when you're ahead by that far at halftime. And it kind of takes the coaching right out of your hands. Okay. You know? I mean, you don't, uh, there's, uh, 
Uh, I don't know. It's it's a double-edged sword. Would you rather be tied at half? It's no, one of those? no, no, I didn't say that. No, <laughs> no, I didn't say that. But it's just that, uh, you know, it makes it tough, the second half. It really does. I don't think that's going to happen the rest of the year, Jim. So I think from now on, we're going to have some... Um, Tense yeah. halftime. <laughs> you would like to coach for four quarters then, yeah. rather than, you know, have to kind of sit back and do things to make the clock run. Yeah. Well, either that or I'd like to get the ball and and uh, have the second unit moving it and the second defense playing well and, you know, that type of thing. But it didn't work out that way because of that 90-yard drive. Uh, that, uh, you know, really uh, took our momentum away. Even though we're 31 points ahead and it didn't mean anything, it uh, takes the fun out of being there uh, playing. But you came out of the game, you didn't play Garland Rivers, you didn't have your two offensive linemen, John Elliott and uh, Mike Hussar. Right. came out of it fairly injury-free, so, you know, right. successful all the way around That's from right. That. From that standpoint, I'm pleased. Now, here's the problem. Uh, is our defense getting enough snaps to really be sharp when we get into a slugfest? That's what I worry about. Um, that's important to me. That's why we 